My name is Marianne Marchese, and I am the CEO and founder of New Leash on Life USA. New Leash on Life is a very unique program. It is a prison dog training program, but where most prison dog programs are more concerned about the dogs, speaking of dogs, New Leash on Life USA spends as much time working with the inmates to make their outcomes successful too. I trained Breeze uh, while I was in, incarcerated at the ASD. She went through training with me um, and she became a great dog. I know you ain't supposed to do this, but she used to love um, cheese curls. <laughs> 
So I gave her a couple cheese curls because she used to like cheese curls. I mean, the dogs are supposed to sleep in their crates in the cells at night. And we've heard from COs when they do the bed checks that, you know, there's two heads, you know, the boxer and the inmate. Yeah, she laid in my bed with me and, and you know, we just lay there, you know, and cuddled up like, you know, kids, you know? And because she had her kennel, but, um, you know, I just I just wanted to do that. It's because I wanted to be that close to her, so I just wanted to do that just to see how she would act, and and she acted good. These dogs worship these guys. These dogs have come from nothing, and now they're getting love and attention 24/7. In fact, the first problem that we had in the first program is that after four weeks, when we tried to take the dogs out of the prison to take them to a park so they could get socialized and be outside, we had to drag, drag the dogs out of the prison. Literally, the dogs are flattened out on the cement. We're trying to pull them. They're not walking. They're trying to get back, break back into the prison. The inmates are flattened up against the glass of the cell block, looking like it's their last day. It was, it was, I was ready to cry. I was given the news today she was adopted out and you know I had such an attachment to her it was like she she was my baby you know and um, you know, I'm not gonna see her again probably but I asked for a picture of her um but she's good she's in a good placement and I'm not crying because of the sadness of it I'm crying because I know that she's gonna be put in good placement. I'm crying because of the love that I have for her. I think one of the things that impacts the inmates is that these dogs come from horrible situations where they shouldn't trust anybody. They should be hor terrible animals and within days become loving, secure, and they feel safe. And I think that's something that, that they realize that that these creatures are capable of doing that and maybe they could maybe they could let go of some of the anger too. And the fact that they are successful, they're all successful with their dogs. These dogs all pass their canine good citizen test. So now these guys have done something on their own that's successful that they truly did. And in some cases that's the first time they've ever been successful at anything. Feels great. Uh -huh. Just to know that she has another day, and another day after that, and another day after that, and another day after that, you know, it's beautiful. Hey, look, I've been out here for almost a year now. If it wasn't for this program, I'll be honest with you, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. I'll probably be back in prison. One of the highlights of the job is when I, when we go through, the team goes through the shelter, and we've selected the dogs we're gonna take to the prison, and we get to put a sign in their card on, in the front of the cage that says rescued by new leash on life. That's fabulous. The worst part is that same time when I can't put that on every cage. So the hard part is not being able to take more dogs than we do. But I can't think about what I'm not doing or what we're not doing. I can only think about what we are doing because it would be overwhelming. So, and I know I'm gonna grow it, we're gonna grow it, we're gonna keep adding programs and be able to take more dogs.
We have old Red. He's probably just over 15. This is Misty. Misty is about 10 years old. How it all started for us, um, us as a family. I was a stay-at-home mom. I had the girls home with me. We ended up inadvertently getting this 15-year-old senior pity, and his name was Lionel. He really wasn't supposed to stay with us. He was supposed to go into another foster, so it was kind of strange that he ended up being with us. Um, and he was terminal, uh, had a few weeks to live, but he ended up loving the girls, so I knew that our home was his home for however he had long left. We loved him so very much, and through that experience, we realized how many senior dogs were in shelters and in the same position he was in. We started taking in one senior dog at a time, and now we are up to about 35 senior dogs at any given time. So now the girls, of course, you know, every time we get in a new dog, they're right there with me when we go to the vet. You know, anytime we have to go to the shelter to pick up dogs, they're with me. These girls have helped me every step of the way. It's been about three years, but it's still so emotional for me. It's always hard. Every time we lose a dog, it's very emotional for us. But the rewards of saving them and giving them a home and then not only adding value to their lives, but the value that they add to their foster's lives. It's just a beautiful thing. So when they pass, although we're upset, it's a happy moment because we know we've all done a really good thing. Old Red came from Orange County Shelter. We thought he did not have a year. So like Lionel, he lived longer than expected. You know, every time we take in a hospice dog always seems to happen because that emotional and the mental stability that you bring to the dog, the comfort care, it just gives them that quality of life that you know inside they want to live a little bit longer because they, they're happy where they are. power of forgiving eyes, a wagging tail, and an ending love. That love of humans and that, that will and drive to be part of your pack and to take care of you and to make sure that you're happy and to bring that smile to your face every single day, no matter what, without complaint. I love it when they come around. Good. They're literally my favorite. It's unconditional love. They don't ask questions. Um, they don't, you, you don't need to, you know, stroke their egos. They just, they just want to be loved. You smell just like my dog. I think it's a way for uh, students to have a reminder of home. It makes me so happy to have you around. Pete's Pet Posse is the new pet therapy program at Oklahoma State University. 
and it is a unique one-of-a-kind program. We can't find another model like it anywhere. The Pete's Pet Posse program is a natural extension of Oklahoma State University's commitment to wellness. The pet program is part of the emotional health. Yeah, it's for any kind of de-stressing, it lowers the blood pressure. You will find that the employees, the faculty and the staff will be down on their hands and knees, enjoying the dogs every bit as much as the students are. Evie was one of the first in the posse. Crisis brought her to campus. She was a stray that the vet school took in after the Shawnee tornado. I think she knows she was, um, you know, not in the best shape when she got here and they helped her and they nursed her back to health. And I think she kind of feels like she wants to give back. Evie gives back when students are in crisis. Oftentimes I'm dealing with students that have really struggled because of something that's happened in their lives. It's, it's, a, it's both a nice diversion, it's a calming factor, it helps students uh, kind of relieve that stress and are able to talk about what's going on. Anxiety is an epidemic on every college campus and it doesn't happen at finals week and it doesn't happen the first week of school. It happens every single day throughout a college campus. Spring break 2014, the newly formed Pete's Pet Posse was put to the test when tragedy struck the university. They were in Gulf Shores on spring break and a drunk driver hit her. In an instant, the Gamma Phi Beta sorority lost a beloved sister. I remember flying down the stairs, running outside and like seeing something I never want to see in my whole life. When the girls came back, it was like grief I've never witnessed before. This was the perfect time to bring dogs in. Just kind of like took your mind off of it for a little while. You have these dogs that are willing to like give you unconditional love and they don't know what's going on. They don't know what's happened. They're not going to look at you like they don't know what to say to you. And so that really helped a lot. We are not a reactive dog therapy program. We're a proactive dog therapy program. So we don't think, hey, it's finals week. Let's hurry up and get some dogs on campus. We think, oh, it's every week. There's always anxiety. There's always people in need. And so why not have dogs ready and available when we need them on campus as our complete posse there to help our campus out? So I think that's truly what sets us apart. They live with us. They're regular dogs during off hours. They chase rabbits, chase squirrels, hang out on the couch. But when we take them to campus and they put their vest on, they do act a little differently. They, they are trained. They know how to respond in certain situations. Like Scruff, the OSU president and first lady's dog, most of these therapy dogs were first rescue dogs. Chico is a rescue dog. I work with clients who struggle with body image issues, eating disorders, some stress, anxiety. Having him in my office just seems to calm clients down. So it's been a real positive experience so far. I just see the joy it brings people's faces and just people seeing them on the sidewalk when I'm walking around campus. They get so excited to see the dog and always want to pet them. That is what about a dog makes a difference between a hug from a human and a kiss from a dog. All the difference in the world. <laughs>
stars fall out of the sky.